Okay, good morning. Um, today we want to go through a strength workout that I would feel comfortable um, giving to any of my clients or patients around that six to eight week mark. So after you've been working on some core coordination, um, really low impact, but seeing that you can strengthen <clears throat> using that core coordination with um, no real impact. And really everything we're going to do today is our feet are in parallel. There are some options that if we feel good, we can go um, in tandem or kind of like a longer stance. But those first few strength workouts, we really wanna keep them even parallel to build strength around our pelvis so we're not straining our pubic bone that may still be a little softened and plain healing. And then also RSI joint. So lots of glute strengthening, lots of core strengthening to help facilitate um, good healing in this area of our body, our pelvis. Um, so if you have worked with me at all, you know how much the breath is important. So we're going to get started today in standing, connecting our breath to our pelvic floor, and starting by loosening up our rib cage a little bit. So as we're pregnant, our rib cage is up and expanded, and then that affects how our abdominals work and also how our diaphragm is able to get our pelvic floor to kick in. So as we inhale down, our pelvic floor should also drop, relax, and expand. As we exhale, our pelvic floor should contract and lift, and then that's when our diaphragm comes up as well. If our ribs are up here, that changes our diaphragm relationship, and we may just be short breathing up here without much response down in our pelvic floor. So let's get started kind of focusing on that area of our body. Go ahead and plant your feet, so kind of a triangle of your feet, your pad of your big toe, your baby toe, and then your heels. Um, we want our toes pointed forward, and if you need to bring your feet out wider, if you're currently pregnant, that's fine. I just don't want you out here right now. So forward, and then hands on your ribs first, and we're just going to inhale into our ribs, okay? So inhale, and exhale. So pretty quiet up here, not a lot of raising of the chest. We are expanding the ribs, expanding the belly. Go ahead and inhale again. And exhale. Let everything recoil, keep it going. Inhale. This time as you exhale, squeeze the pelvic floor. Let's do three more like that. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, expand. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, expand. Exhale, squeeze. Good, now let's draw attention to our lower abdomen. You can place two fingers right inside your pelvic um, pointers here, your ASIS. And as you inhale, you should feel expansion under your fingers. And as you exhale, you should feel tensioning or like a taut a sheet of paper right under your fingers. You may have to kind of go through a little bit of adiposity, a little bit of um, stomach there, just like I do, and that's just fine. We're feeling our muscles right underneath that. You won't feel anything move, you'll just feel tension, okay? So let's inhale and exhale. Notice I changed the shape of my mouth to breathe out like a straw. You can also change it to fog up a mirror, okay? So whatever works for you to gently draw in that lower stomach, like you're getting ready to be tickled, okay? So it's not a suck in here like that. I stay nice and tall and it's just a gentle drawing in of the lower belly. So let's try that. Play around with your mouth shape for a little while. Inhale and exhale. Two more. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. So really letting that stomach expand, relax as you inhale. And as we exhale, we're drawing it in. Let's try one more time. Inhale and exhale. Now let's loosen up the rib cage a little bit. Let's go arms overhead, hands are together here, and we're just leaning to one side. Getting a big stretch under that right arm. 
the right rib cage. Shift the hips forward tight. You can kind of come in and out of it just like this with the hips to help get that stretch of the rib cage. And let's switch arms, arms to the right, hips to the left. We've been doing a lot of pulling exercises, sitting while feeding, um, carrying your babe, everything's kind of folded forward. We lose some mobility in our mid back right when we need it the most to help get that breath going. Let's go down to hands and knees. If you do have a chair or a surface next to you, like a couch or a coffee table, then we may use that later. So that's why the chair is there, um, depending on what variation of exercise you would like to do. So let's go ahead and loosen up. Loosen up the mid back a little bit more. And let's reach up with our right arm. Feel a big stretch through here. If you like me, you may even feel a stretch in your hips. And reach under and feel a big stretch in your mid back. And you can keep this threading the needle going, or you can hold that stretch. I love this to get the mid back warmed up and even the hip rotators, the adductors warmed up. Two more here if you're threading with me. Okay, let's go left arm, reach up, open up that chest, and then reach under. Feel a good stretch in the mid back, even the low back. Relax it down as you come down. Let it all go. In one more. There we go. Okay, let's come to hands and knees, and then we're going to use that core breath that we just did. We're going to hold as we exhale, and then can we hold that for a little while? First, we're just going to practice the hold. Second, we're going to practice the hold while we move an arm or a leg, okay? Because that's what our pelvic floor and our core does, is it holds us stable um, so that our arms and our legs can move efficiently and powerfully. So, let's go ahead and inhale, relax everything. Exhale. Hold five, four, three, two, one. Good. Inhale, and relax. And shake it out if you need to. Breathe here. Even though I had you exhale to cue your breath or to cue your core, I'm sorry, I want you to still be able to keep breathing. Okay? So that is a learned skill and it may come sooner or later. So let's try it again. Inhale, exhale, pull in. Five, count out loud. Four, three, two, one. Good. If you count out loud, I know you're breathing. Relax. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale, fill up. Exhale, pull in. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go straight into our next one. Inhale. Exhale. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. If you're having a hard time feeling if you're doing this or not, put a ball or a block in between your knees and squeeze during that hold. You can also just draw your knees together if you don't have a ball or a block. That's just fine. It's going to help zip up everything just a little bit tighter. Okay, let's try it again before um, we're going to zip up and then we're going to raise an alternating arm. Okay, so inhale big. Exhale. And raise, squeeze that blocker ball between your legs, raise, raise. If you need to reset the pelvic floor and the core, that's just fine. Two more. One, two. Good. Let's go back into a child's pose. Take some deep breaths. Relax that pelvic floor. Breathe deeply into your pelvic floor. Okay, let's try a little different one. We're gonna hold this time and we're gonna do a fire hydrant leg, okay? So building the strength on the outside, also challenging our pelvic floor in a different plane of motion. So inhale, fill up, exhale, 
hold, pulse five, four, three, two, one. Nice. Inhale, relax, shift those hips. Good. And inhale, fill up. Exhale, hold, other side, five, four. You're holding the stomach, pelvic floor, all at the same time. Two more, two, one. Good, and relax. Nice job. So as we move throughout the workout today, um, I will give you different options. We're still waiting on our dumbbell delivery as we move to the home gym uh, that does not exist. And so, excuse, I'm going to be using plates. If you have a band, I have some options. If you have a loop band, I have some options. Um, but there should be an option for you. You're going to exhale through the effort part of the movement. So today, hip thrusts are part of the exercise. And so we're going to exhale as I thrust my hips up. As I come up, I'm stopping where I'm stacked at the top. I'm not hyper extending here, OK? So, the workout is three blocks, two movements each block. Um, we'll do 60 seconds today. Since they're low impact, we want to really build that strength foundation, so a little bit longer. 60 seconds on, 30 seconds off. We'll repeat. So we'll do first exercise, second exercise, first exercise, second exercise, rest, and then go on to that second block, OK? Um, so the first block are hip thrusts and a single arm row. So if you're working with a band, we're going to do hip thrust pull aparts. So that looks like this. And pulling apart, bringing our shoulder blades down and back together as we pull apart. You should feel that in your abdomen as you exhale, pulling in your lower belly. If you don't have a band but you have weights, it can look like this. So we're going to inhale, exhale, and raise. Obviously, that was too heavy for me. I'm going to go one arm at a time. So we're going to go here. The reason I know it was too heavy is because I had to arch my back to get the weight up, and I don't want that. I want to be nice and stable in my core and raise up right in front of me, like that. The second exercise is a row, a single arm row. So you have two options here. If you are newly postpartum, I want you to keep your legs together. Put your hand on a bench, a coffee table, a chair. You're going to exhale and bring that elbow right by your body as you pull up. So a nice stable base, and I'm also using this for balance. If you want a little bit more challenge, we go legs far apart. My right arm is the row arm, my left arm is forward, hinge forward, nice stable base, and we're running here for a minute, okay? So those are your first two exercises. We have hip thrust pull parts and a row. Let's get the timer going. As always, if you ever have any, let's go five seconds. And pull apart. Exhale as you pull apart. Good job. Exhale. I'm also squeezing my bum, but I'm not hyperextending my hips. I'm working on finding a really good stack of my rib cage over my hips. Okay? So we're working on getting ourselves out of that seated posture, coordinating our core and our pelvic floor with a motion that normally adds pressure. So if I'm not exhaling, if you find yourself holding your breath like that during an effort, then that actually is putting pressure down on your pelvic floor. So I want you to focus on the exhale with effort. So we're training our body to support us through harder activities. Okay, this is all about regaining the training. We have 10 seconds here, keep it going. Three, and rest. Nice job. We're going to go into that single arm row. Pick an arm. I'm going to do right arm this time. Next round, we'll do left arm, OK? As you can tell, my allergies are kicking my butt today. <laughs> so if I'm snorting and coughing and all the things, we're good. Just my allergies with all these windows open. It's beautiful outside, but I cannot breathe very well. <laughs> so this one, again, we're hinging back. Supporting our lower belly right before the row. I'm going to step forward and exhale. Nice job. So what I'm keeping myself doing, I'm not rowing with my chest. I'm keeping my chest, shoulders pointed towards the ground. 
my core has to work a little bit harder this way, but I'm working on that stable, um, stabilizing muscles, kicking in right before the pull. So they learn that that's what they're supposed to do. So normally that's automatic in our bodies, but after we have a baby, after we have surgery, um, or if we're just in pain, those muscles often shut off the anticipatory muscles too. So I'm still exhaling before every pull, pulling in my lower belly as we go. If you're using a chair for support, it's gonna look like this right here, okay? We've got less than 10, keep it going. Pull with that arm. Excellent, and we'll go back to that hip thrust pull apart. Newly postpartum, I want you to stay hydrated. I also, um, if you need to eat a carbohydrate snack before or during your workout, so like a bar, maybe a little fruit, something like that, your body's working hard to heal and repair, maybe breastfeed. So just keeping that energy up so you don't get a big sugar crash. Let's go here, pull apart, and exhale. Little different band. I can get different range of motion, okay? Nice job. And the goal is we're just strengthening for 60 seconds. The heart rate will come up a little bit. We'll get a little bit of a sweat going, but the goal here is move in all the ways and build a big, good strength foundation to support you through your daily life. And also, as you want to get more active, you have this foundation of strength to support your body. So our ligaments, um, our soft tissue stays a little lax up to four months post breastfeeding. So we need the muscles to work a little bit harder to support us. This is why I always recommend a progressive, good strength foundation before any impact. And rest. We're gonna go opposite arm into a row. I'm gonna grab the chair on this one. And we're gonna go left arm. If you're doing that staggered stance, then it's gonna be right leg forward, left arm down, hinge, and pull here. Okay, as you can see, I have a flat back. I wanna keep that flat back. Even when I get tired, I don't wanna start rounding like that. Okay. Grab my 10 knot plates. Support myself. Pull in the lower belly from the hinge. So when I exhale, I'm feeling the squeeze and lift of my pelvic floor and the squeeze of my lower belly. And then I relax as I come down, okay? I relax completely. We're teaching our body that it should coordinate with tightening or tension right before the activity, the effort. And then it doesn't have to hold tension the entire time. Our body is not meant to hold a bicep curl all day. The same thing, our body is not meant to hold our stomach in all day or our pelvic floor in, our, in all day. Our pelvic floor will work more automatically once we get it going, once we rehab it. But there's no reason that we should pull in our, our stomach all day. That changes how we can breathe, that changes how your pelvic floor can work and rest. Okay, we get a little longer rest here. Let me explain the second block of exercises. We have a bridge and press, and then we have a box squat or a regular squat. So a bridge just on your back, feet about shoulder width apart, pretty close to your bottom so you can touch here. Exhale, draw on your belly, press up through your heels. Okay, that's a bridge. If you would like to press, choose an arm, and you're gonna press up as you press your hips up. Don't worry about the timer, we've got more rest here. Okay, so that's your bridge and press. We'll switch arms the next round. Your box squat is just sending your hips back to a box, a chair, tapping, exhaling with effort before you press up through your whole foot, and hips forward, okay? So we're practicing toes forward, whole foot, press up. If you'd like a little bit more of a challenge, then you can do a full range of motion squat here, maybe even a weight, and we're just coming down and up like that, okay? So box squat um, with or without weight, or full range squat with or without weight. What I want you to focus on, oh, we got two seconds, let's go bridge. Ah, down, 
Feet shoulder width apart in. Exhale up. Good. Exhale up. Let the head rest. Squeeze the glutes. And meeting nice in a, in a nice line like this. I'm not overextending. There's no sense in that. I'm letting my body find center. Finding an, a nice relationship that helps my pelvic floor, supports my pelvic floor, supports my abdomen, as we're in this window of healing still postpartum. Okay? You got it. Keep exhaling and pressing. And using my hand to feel what my stomach is doing. Five seconds here. Let's go into our squats, okay? So like I was saying, as you come down, I want your pelvic floor to relax. As you come up, I'm squeezing and lifting pelvic floor to help support me with that increase in pressure. This is really can be used um, like you're coming up from the couch with a baby. Um, we're helping and practicing our pelvic floor and our core to support us just standing up, okay? So I'll do a few of each here. Here we go. Tap and up. This is all the box squat is. You can do weight in front of you here. You can do kind of front rack position here. But my butt is going back, which is why I like to start with the chair or the box. Get those good motor habits going. Instead of knees going forward, that's not a squat. <laughs> Exhale and up. If you're going full depth here, I'm going to actually let my weight go down and up. We're pressing through our whole foot. We want to keep practicing with our toes forward. We're going here. Less than five. Nice. Let's switch to the other side, bridge and press. Again, you decide how fast you go. You decide the weight. You decide when you get water breaks. This is up to you and your healing. I'm just giving you the tools and facilitating. I like a game plan, so that's what I want to provide to you. But by no means, this is not the time to push. This is the time to challenge yourself and also listen to yourself, okay? So three more seconds here. Let's go bridge and press. Exhale as you press through your whole foot and squeeze the bottom to get you to a nice level plane from your ribs to your knees. Squeezing as I lift, squeezing pelvic floor as I lift, relaxing as I come down. Nice job. Halfway there. You got it. Relax down. Press and squeeze up. The squeeze should precede your hips and your arms pressing. That's what nature does, and that's what we're retraining. This is still rehab, right? We're retraining our brain and our body to work together. So we're going to go back to that sit to stand box squat or a full range squat, depending on what you want to do. But I love this uh, workout as an example of things that we're going to do every day, right? Now you just have a strategy to do them without pelvic floor symptoms. Less than 10. Breathe. Let the heart rate come back down. Here we go. Exercise. Butt back, tap, and up. I challenge you to hold the weight of your baby <laughs> in front of you, because this is probably a motion that you do a hundred times a day. Getting up from feeding, up from the couch, up from the chair, and now you have a strategy to do it. You got it. Exhale, less than 30 here. We're halfway there. 
If your legs are burning, take a little bit of a break. You're fine. You do what your body needs. It should be challenging, not symptomatic. No pain, no leaking, no pressure. If those things are happening, then we just need to change the weight, the speed, um, all of those things. The strategy, rest, last block, strict press. So we're gonna kneel. We're gonna hold in here. We're just gonna go straight up. Okay. If you feel like you are gonna um, arch back to get that way up, like this, then I want you to go up against the wall. Press one hand into that wall, and that's gonna keep you from arching back. Don't worry about the timer, you still got rest. The second exercise for the block is a hinge. So we're building up to a deadlift or picking up a car seat, right? So booty goes back, my back is flat. I have a little bit of bend in my knee, but I'm not squatting. It's just pull it back, exhale, hips go forward. Hips go back, chest goes forward, hips go forward. That's all the deadlift is. That's our hip hinge for today. You can use weights. I'll show also show you how to use a band. So we're getting ready to start here in five seconds, but here's the band, okay? Let's go ahead and go tall kneeling, single arm press, grab whatever weight, can a soup, bottle of water, exhale up. And stay nice and in line and not arching back. Calm the breath down. Control the core before the press. This is all about building strategy so our body is well prepared for those fast, intense workouts that you want to do later, maybe in a class, maybe at home, a HIIT class, a home wad, whatever your style of workout is. It normally often involves speed <laughs> or more uh, load. So here's the place that we set foundation while still building strength. You got it. And really concentrated on pulling in beforehand. So this first round of hinges, I'll use a weight. The second round of hinges, I'll show you how to do a band, okay? So take a sip of water, take a breather. I'm gonna let my breathing normalize a little bit. If you are getting tired, noticing you're compensating, maybe you save this block for another day, okay? So it depends on where you are in your workout, but you can always change. Here we go. Inhale, exhale, right before the hips up. So as I find this flat part of my back, I exhale, pull in my belly, hips up, okay? What I was saying was you can always change the load, the speed, the strategy, meaning when you cue in your pelvic floor, when you cue in your lower belly, how you breathe, that's all up to you. I'm giving you some tools, some ideas, but they're not rules. But if you have symptoms, those are the things that you can change. That's load, speed, strategy, and how many you're doing, right? So, you should feel this in your hamstrings and your glutes. Still try to stay rooted down in your whole foot. None of this toe tapping. That's gonna take your pelvic floor activation away from your knee. Okay, let's go strict press, other arm. I'll show you how to do that at the wall, okay? You grab a sip of water. Nice sunshine here. Okay, other arm. So if I'm pressing with my left arm, my right foot is gonna be up. My right hand is against the wall, pressing into the wall before I press up. Helps me stay true to my strict press without arching my back up. Also cues in my core a little bit more. You got it.
Exhale up. 30 seconds here. Really work on coordination before the press. Nice job. It's probably burning shoulders, that's good. That's what we're here for, right? A little strength, a little muscle burn, but no symptoms. Less than 10. Nice job. Last one, deadlift with a band. If you like the weight, stick with the weight. If you have a band, you're gonna step on the band. Feet are in the same position. Choke up a little bit if you need to. The goal is send the hips back, exhale, and pull up, okay? So we're just waiting for the timer. Take this time to bring the heart rate down, the breath down. Here we go. Exercise, butt back, hips forward. Exhaling, right before I forcefully push my hips forward, squeeze my butt. Relax, pelvic floor, contract, pelvic floor. Relax, contract. We're contracting right before the hips come forward. You got it. If you're finding you're having symptoms at the top, a little leaking or pressure at the top, you may actually be squeezing too hard. Squeeze about 25% less. See what happens. Do you feel supported still? But you're not squeezing too hard. So our pelvic floor is like a trampoline. Nice job. Okay, let's take a few minutes here. We are going to do a little bit of a cardio burst. It's up to you if you want to do this, get your heart rate going. But we're basically going to do a, step, a swing and a step. So we're working up to like a hip thrust um, kettlebell swing. Just a little bit more gentle here. Um, if you're interested, let me pause the timer. Nice job. So we're gonna do a minute each side. And then we're also gonna do a band around our ankles. If you have a band, and just do some side stepping here to get our side butts going. So a little bit of a finisher. We're gonna have less rest in between than we have been. We're gonna do 20 seconds of rest in between, one minute of work. So if you have a weight, grab it. If you have a band, grab it. If you don't have a band, but you still wanna partake, you're just gonna stay hinged on this one leg instead for that one minute. And then next time, we'll switch sides and step here. You'll still very much feel it on this, okay? So more about keeping moving during this time. The previous, we were being really intentional with load, okay? So I hope that that makes a difference there. I'm gonna grab my weight. Let your heart rate come down a little bit. But we're gonna do a step swing with our weight here. So that's going to look like feet together, weight on the side, probably a dumbbell instead of splitting. Hinge back a little bit in your knees. As I exhale, I'm gonna step up and swing the weight in front of me, okay? So we're always coming back to the single leg, okay? Here we go. Starting your workout. Here we go. Three, two, one. Exercise. And exhale as I swing up. Play around with the weight. This is going to hurt my finger very much. <laughs> Let me change here. I need to change sides. You got it. You should feel this mostly in the glute on the side of the weight. Exhaling. My chest is hinging. So I'm driving forward with my hips. Less than 20. Drive with those hips. You got it. 10 here. Drive. Here we go. Finish it out. Feel the burn in that leg. 
Nice job. Okay. Now we grab the band quickly and we're sidestepping, keeping our heart rate up. Here we go. Less than five. We're hinging back. We're staying stable here. A little bit in our knees. And let's go. Here we go. Toes are staying forward. I'm driving with my heel. I'm keeping tension on my band the whole time. If our side butts are stronger, actually less likely to leak urine. Who knew, right? Here we go. Let's keep moving. This one is all about heart rate and muscle activation. We're not being as strict with strategy unless you need to be, right? Only you know how you feel. I know. I just get my heart rate up in a good way. Keep breathing. Don't hold your breath. Less than 20 here. You got it. Feel the burn. Bring it up. Other. Swing and sidestep. Five seconds here. You got it. All right. Let's try the other arm. Maybe it won't hurt my fingers this time. But we're together. Step apart. So it's my right arm. I'm stepping apart with my left leg. Okay? Five seconds here. Here we go. Down. Up. Hips. Swing forward. What does it look like from the side? Here. And not like that. And not swinging forward by putting my chest back and swinging forward by bringing my hips forward. Keep it going. 30 seconds. You got it. Nice shot. Exhale. Hip drive. Keep going. Land soft as the weight comes down. Land soft. That may be the hardest part. Ten seconds. Exhale. Nice job. Weight down. Band around the ankles. This is our last exercise. So just keep moving. Keep that butt back. And keep that chest tall and straight, okay? By chest tall, I mean don't round. We are hinging forward at our hips. Here we go. But back, straight chest, you got it, keep going, toes forward, drive with the heels, feel it on the outside of your butt, you need to let those arms move to get your mind out of here, muscle pain, right, you should get some music, get dancing, here we go, keep sidestepping, you got it, chest tall, hinge at the hips, Toes forward, driving the outside of your heels. You're so strong. <laughs> you got this. Your glutes, we'll feel it tomorrow. That's what we want, right? We'll do a nice little stretch at the end. Give you some tools to take care of those glutes the next couple of days. Less than 10 here. Keep moving. Yes. Woo! Okay, take a breather. Grab some water. Let's turn our timer off. We'll do a few hip stretches here and get you all on your way. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you ever have any questions about what you, um, some strategies to use, some different types of modifications, any symptoms you may be having, Please let me know. Um, I love to problem solve with people. So let's take a seat on whatever surface you were using earlier. Let's cross one leg over the other. Figure four. We're just going to roll forward from the pelvis. Right there. As you can tell, my hip is pretty tight. You may also feel this in the low back. That's great.
deep breaths here. As you inhale, let that pelvic floor expand. And as you can see, after spending a little time on this side, I'm able to go a little further. Hip mobility is so important postpartum. Our hips have a direct role to our pelvic floor. If our hips are tight, then our pelvic floor probably isn't moving very well. Okay, let's switch sides. This is something you can do multiple times a day. <laughs> this is figure four stretch. Really helps out with low back pain. Keeping our pelvic floor able to expand, act like that trampoline. Nice job, guys. I hope this gave you a little bit more energy for the day. Showed you how strong you actually are, what little equipment you actually need, and that strengthening can be a great uh, workout postpartum. You don't just have to walk. And I actually think strengthening is pretty important to the rehab process postpartum. Let's do a few hamstring scoops here. So kickstand one heel out in front of you, a little bend in that knee as you reach down. Scoop up. Just threading that sciatic nerve through our piriformis and our hamstring after we've stretched it out. Nice job, guys. One more. Kickstand the other leg a little bit in that knee. Oh yeah, that was a good stretch. Keep it scooping. Keep it breathing. One more. Let's come down to our knees. One knee, I should say. Let's get a good hip flexor stretch here. So foot out in front, kind of tuck your tail a little bit. Let the pelvis come forward. If this feels good, you can stay here. You can also raise an arm up. Nice job. If you want to kind of rotate here, add a little bit more movement, just not letting that front knee rotate on me. Switch sides. Pelvis tucked. Drive the pelvis forward. Raise that arm up. Hang out here. And rotate. Nice job, guys. Always reach out with questions. My Instagram is fem, F -E -M, dot unfolding. My website is femunfolding.com. And my email is laurel, L A U R E L, dot femunfolding, right? Or laurel at femunfolding. <laughs> Sorry about that, dot com. Everybody have a good day.